Drill music, a subgenre of hip hop originating from the vibrant streets of Chicago's South Side in the early 2010s, serves as a raw and unfiltered expression of urban life, strongly influenced by the gritty narratives of trap music emerging from Atlanta, Georgia. Characterized by its heavy bass lines, stark beats, and raw lyrical content, drill music delves into the realities of inner city life, focusing heavily on themes such as money, use, and sex. As the genre began to gain momentum and spread beyond its Chicago roots, it brought with it a wave of controversy and scrutiny. Drill music suddenly found itself at the center of legal battles, with its lyrics being used as evidence in court cases. Rappers, recognizing the potential consequences, started adding disclaimers to their music videos, explicitly stating that any guns depicted were merely props. Even public figures such as New York City Mayor Eric Adams voiced concerns over the proliferation of drill music on the internet, citing its potential influence on youth culture and crime. In Philadelphia, the influence of drill music has been particularly pronounced in the realm of criminal justice. One prominent case resulting in the 2018 resentencing of Ronald Hollow Man Thomas highlighted the intersection of music and the law. Thomas successfully appealed a murder charge from 2010, arguing that jurors in the original trial had been unduly influenced by his song lyrics, which they perceived as confessions of guilt. The tragic events leading to Thomas's legal entanglements unfolded on April 22, 2010, when he fatally shot 23-year-old Anwar Ashmore following a dispute over a stolen brick of cocaine. Both Thomas and Ashmore were members of Team A, a group of drug dealers and aspiring rappers operating in the Strawberry Mansion section of North Philadelphia. Five months after Ashmore's death, Thomas released his mixtape, Earbleed, featuring lyrics that seemed to allude to the events surrounding the murder. Half of Rick missing, and it's one of my N-word can't point fingers because I don't know who did it, but soon as I find out, I swear that N-word finished. This case exemplifies the complex relationship between art, culture, and the legal system, raising questions about the interpretation of creative expression and its implications in matters of justice. Hey, sm hey smile, these niggas out of fucking pocket out here, man. What's up with these niggas? I got in that room, turned to Alicia Keys On oh, bro, X tie that nigga bit the cheese I'm 50 and I'm buying money in my lawyer fees X10, we got them buttons, you can't run from these Fat I got in that room, turned to Alicia Keys On oh, bro, X tie that nigga bit the cheese I'm 50 and I'm buying money in my lawyer fees X10, we got them buttons, you can't run from these Fat Ty, hailing from the 24th and Diamond area, was a member of the notorious Zoo Gang, a clique spanning blocks across North Philly, including 24th and Burks, Pentown, 20th and Montgomery, and 10th and Thompson. In March of 2024, Fat Ty was apprehended in connection with the tragic murder of Jaleel Shands, aka Loso. The fatal incident occurred on April 5, 2021, when Shands and his partner were strolling near 3rd and Chestnut Streets around 9.30 p.m. Gunfire erupted as four individuals emerged from a van, unleashing a hail of bullets in the heart of Old City near the Science History Institute. Shans tragically succumbed to a gunshot wound to the chest, with at least 27 shell casings marking the scene of the crime. And shot to death in Old City last night. He was walking with his girlfriend near 3rd and Chestnut when a group of men jumped out of a van and started shooting. Action News reporter Catherine Scott has the details now. I can't believe it. Uh, this is a peaceful area. A murder Monday night in Old City. Police have now identified the victim as 25-year-old Jaleel Shands, gunned down just feet from the Science History Institute on Chestnut near 3rd. I mean, I just moved here like six months ago, so a complete shock. It's been pretty quiet, all things considered. It's very rare that we have shootings in this particular area. Near the Museum of American Revolution and other historic sites, an area now seeing more and more visitors returning. There were still people eating outside nearby a Budokan when dozens of shots were fired shortly before 9.30 p.m. You could hear the anguish from Shan's mother as she arrived to the crime scene. Shan's and his girlfriend were walking on Chestnut shortly before 9.30 p.m. when four men wearing masks with guns jumped out of a minivan walked to the sidewalk and fired more than two dozen shots at Shands. This victim was shot many, many times. But as far as I know, there were no words exchanged, no robbery, no fight. So it appears they jumped out of this vehicle targeting this 25-year-old victim. 
Shans was struck multiple times and died on the scene. His girlfriend was not physically harmed. Police believe the suspects got away in a gold or silver minivan, possibly with Maryland plates. If you have any information, detectives want to hear from you. At Police Headquarters, Catherine Scott, Channel 6 Action News. When confronted with inquiries regarding the incident, Fat Ty opted to cooperate fully with the authorities, providing crucial details that shed light on the series of tragic events. In his statement to the police, Fat Ty revealed that his close friend, Ten, known colloquially as Burke Street Man, played a significant role in the untimely demise of Loso. Delving further into his cooperation, Fat Ty implicated an individual he holds as a sworn adversary, none other than the up-and-coming rapper from Bloomberg, Bloomberg Eared. According to Fat Ty's testimony, Bloomberg Eared stands accused of orchestrating the murder of Wesley Rodwell, who was affectionately known in the streets as Burke Street Man Man. The somber occurrence took place on the somber afternoon of May 25, 2022, when Philadelphia police officers rushed to the scene on the 1600 block of West Erie Avenue, discovering Wesley lying motionless, afflicted by multiple gunshot wounds. Despite the valiant efforts of medical personnel, Wesley's life ebbed away, leaving behind a community in mourning. Moreover, Fat Ty did not stop there. He also divulged damning information implicating Blumberg eared in the demise of another individual, Diamond Street Tez or Montez Jackson, as he was known to his peers. The tragic narrative of Montez's final moments unfolded on the chilling evening of December 22, 2022, as officers responded to reports of gunfire emanating from the 3400 block of H Street. Inside a nondescript gray Nissan, authorities discovered Montez, mortally wounded by a barrage of bullets. Rushed to Temple University Hospital, Montez valiantly fought for his life but ultimately succumbed to his injuries, leaving behind a community reeling with grief. As the investigations continue to unfold, Bloomberg Aird now finds himself a fugitive from justice, sought after for his alleged involvement in both of these harrowing homicides. Meanwhile, the shadows of suspicion deepen as Man Man, formerly identified as one of the assailants in the tragic killing of Loso, cast a somber pall over the already grieving community. Bush run down too fast, a blast like lamb truck. He can't slide sober, he a bitch, he got be zanned up. And I keep 30 on my hip, you run up, blick him up. And Gunner said he did a little job, and now that nigga runs. And we got back when Tino died, we caught one by that pump. Like, where you going this day? Zanned up. And I keep 30 on my hip, you run up, blick him up. And Gunner said he did a little job, and now that nigga runs. And we got back when Tino died, we caught one by that pump. Like, where you going? That's that yacht, bro. Why you trying to run? In the gritty narrative of Hop Outblick, a chilling chapter unfolds, delving into the brutal conflict between the PMB and WSM factions. Within this lyrical landscape, the tragic tale of Tino's demise echoes through the verses intertwined with the vengeful retaliation that claimed the life of Brandon Dixon, a member of WSM. The harrowing events unfolded on a fateful Monday, May 9, 2022, at the Liberty Gas Station on East Mount Airy Avenue. Surveillance footage captures the chilling sequence as Brandon Dixon emerges from the gas station market, only to be met with a hail of gunfire from two assailants in a red sedan. Despite Dixon's frantic attempt to evade his attackers, the relentless barrage of bullets leaves him mortally wounded his life extinguished amidst the chaos of the gas station. As the shooters hastily retreat to their vehicle and vanish into the urban labyrinth, Dixon's shattered body and anguished cries serve as haunting reminders of the brutality that permeates the streets. In the aftermath of the brazen daylight shooting, the Philadelphia Police Department launches a desperate manhunt for the perpetrators, denouncing the act as a brazen act of viciousness. Yet, despite their efforts, justice remains elusive, leaving Dixon's grief-stricken mother, Lisa, to grapple with the unbearable loss of her son. Yeah, one family is now grieving the death of their son. Police leaders say shootings are happening far too often and also at any and all times of the day. Action News reporter Walter Perez is live in West Oak Lane with more on the ongoing problem. Walter, this just doesn't end. That's right, Sarah. As you know, we do a lot of stories about homicides, and commonly, those homicides occur under the cloak of night. That's why we emphasize whenever it happens in broad daylight. Now, though, daytime violence more and more is becoming commonplace. Broad daylight. Lisa Dixon is describing the scene that ended with the murder of her son, Brandon Dixon, yesterday afternoon on the 1000 block of East Mount Airy Avenue. I'm just hurt. I'm searching for answers. I just need to see them. I just, I came back here because I'm just looking. I just, 
I need to be where he was last. Time limit or a time restriction on you know the activity that we've been seeing, whether it's in the morning or in the afternoon or in the you know at night. So you know that's why we asked everyone to remain vigilant. Benjamin Picard of East Mount Airy says he decided to fortify his vigilance by purchasing and registering this handgun. See, I'm not even the person that you know uses you know uh, weapons or anything, but it's sad that you have to protect yourself, not even just children from you know road rage today. In the meantime. Lisa Dixon is left wondering how a beautiful life can be lost in the blink of an eye. When he didn't deserve this, he didn't deserve this. Then my son didn't die, deserve to die like this. As the community mourns the senseless loss of life and confronts the grim realities of urban violence, may the souls of those lost, including Tino and Brandon Dixon, find solace in the eternal embrace of peace. In their memory, May we strive for a future where empathy triumphs over apathy and where the echoes of gun violence are silenced by the chorus of hope and healing.